بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد This life can be a deception for us all And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ad-dunya sijinu mu'min wa jinnatul kafir The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said That this life Is the prison Of the believer And it is the paradise Of of the disbeliever this life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described for us in the Quran is full of deception and full of those things which we love which entice us and the hellfire is surrounded by those things which relate to our desires whether it be the excessive love of wealth the excessive love of sexual relations and all the various ways in which human beings try to fulfill their desires and in fact when we look at the world and we contemplate what's around us and we contemplate our own sins and our own shortcomings and the things that we desire as human beings Some of us are inflicted by excessive love of wealth. Some of us as men are inflicted by excessive love for women. Some of the women are inflicted by the excessive love for men. And all of the other trappings of this world, whether it be fame, whether it be fortune, uh, and all those other things which can deceive us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear in the Qur'an as the Qur'an is a divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is perfect and it's full of so much wisdom if we only ponder and reflect and we use it as a tool to guide our life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Zuyina linnasi hubb shahwat Allah tabarak ta'ala says and it has been made be- it has been beautified for mankind the love of their desires and when you contemplate that as what we've already mentioned but as we can reflect upon in our very in our in our lives and in our political situation in every aspect in this dunya for example there are some people they don't want to be removed from their worldly position whether they be in a job whether they be in uh, a leadership position over a country look at the people like uh, the recent passing of Chavez the leader of uh, Venezuela and that they're contemplating or in fact I believe they are going to embalm his body so that it will be able to last outlast the people who are living in this time so that he can be a, a lesson and a not a lesson but in fact someone whom they hold in, in great high esteem as if he is a moral example for future generations so much so that they want to preserve his body so that the people his body would be put on public display as is the case with many communist leaders in fact and before them as is the case with many pharaohs those Egyptian leaders those leaders of those various Egyptian dynasties who preserved themselves out of a want for immortality but in fact all they received and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best is a severe torment for believing themselves to be gods and godlike and that will last for eternity and people will reflect upon them in this life and visit their tombs and see what's left of their decaying bodies only as signs for us to contemplate 
But in fact, they didn't receive that immortality. But in fact, because of their lives, they lived lives of immorality and lives of destruction and oppression. And they will pay for this and are paying for this in the hereafter. وَعِيَادِ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ and when we reflect upon this life, we also see, look at when we reflect on most of the shahwat and those things that we strive for. We see that most of them are not only not lasting, for example, people's fame. How many uh, movie stars and musicians and entertainers have we seen go down? Some of the, which were allegedly some of the greatest entertainers of this time that have died and they're, at the end of their life they were bankrupt and they were in a state of humility and humiliated. So their fame lasted temporarily, showing that it's false. And how many lost their fortunes, also showing that it's temporary and it's false. Even our currency that we use, it's not backed by anything. It's backed by only our faith that we believe that it has value, the value of any paper currency. But it's not backed by gold. It's not backed by anything substantial because it's false. It doesn't. It has a temporary existence and it is something in which we give value to it. But Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, is the first and the last. And what He subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us regarding this life as well as the hereafter is the reality, is the sure reality is the waqir and the events of the hereafter are surely will surely come to pass that's the real challenge for the believer is to strive to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not be deceived by this dunya not be deceived by the beauty of this dunya. And when you even reflect on the people with their shahwat, the people who desire, for example, they desire uh, to watch films, or they engage watching pornography, or they go and involve themselves in impermissible relations, all of this is temporary. The actors, what are they? They're actors. They act. But they're not reflecting reality. All of that is almost a dream and a fantasy. And it's so temporary. And the satisfaction that people experience is temporary. But again, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for the believer is permanent. So do not be deceived by this dunya. Then ponder on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness and seek his guidance and do not let shahwat your desires overtake you and rule you and become your lords as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran that for some of the people they take their desires as gods and we have so many examples in this life that it's not even worth mentioning but we have to be cautious that if we lose status in this dunya, all is not lost because your status with Allah is the most important. That is the sure reality. If you lose your wealth in this dunya, all is not lost because being muflis or bankrupt with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to your deeds is surely the worst type of bankruptcy. Or not being to being able to achieve the fame and the fortune and to have and to fulfill your, your desires. All of this, all of those things are temporary and fleeting and will leave and dissipate, so to speak. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith In the dunya halawatul khudra. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ مُسْتَخْلَفُكُمْ فِيهِ فَيَنْظُرُ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ 
فتقوا الدنيا واتقوا النساء فإن أول فتنة بني إسرائيل كانت في النساء رواه مسلم In this hadith that was collected in Sahih Muslim the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this life it is like a beautiful garden or a sweet a sweet fruit and verily Allah the Almighty establishes you in it how many people are established in this dunya they have wealth they have property they have this they have that they they own stocks here they own bonds here and they 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 feel that they're established in this earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established mankind on this earth wa inna allaha mustakhlafukum fi fa yanzuru kayfa ta'malun and Allah looks to see how you use it fa yanzuru kayfa ta'malun Allah looks to see how you use your wealth. He looks to how to see how you how you fulfill your shahwat, your desires. He looks to see how you use the blessings and favors he's given you. Fayandru kayfa ta'malun. And then Allah then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Fataqu dunya." Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered us and commanded us. He said, "Then fear the dunya, fear this life." فَتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَتَّقُوا النِّسَاء And fear the women Because that is one of the biggest traps for the men Is that they Out of their Quest for fulfilling their desires They want to be with a variety of different women Many and several different women Always chasing, always reflecting Always thinking about women and that's a test. That's a part of our, a part of our nature that we have to control. فَيَنْذَرُ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ فَتَقُوا الدُّنْيَا Fear the dunya. فَتَقُوا nisa And fear the women. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّ أَوْلَى فِتْنَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ He says, because the first fitna or trial or test that befell the children of Israel was was the women the first trial that befell the children of Israel was the women that they were tested with their women they were tested with their desires they were tested with those things which are temporary and fleeing in this life and we ask Allah the Almighty to give us strength to be able to deal with these trials and tribulations that we we face and may Allah forgive us for our many sins and help us to go forward and help us with and bless us with ilm nafia wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbilan and may Allah protect us from kulli kulli su wa makru and the muslims everywhere may Allah guide the muslims everywhere to be away from shirk bid'a kufr zandaqa extremism and those things which lead away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم